Now you should know how to set up the script. Um, I wanted to go over a few of its functions and how it kind of works. Uh, before I do that, if you try and install it and somehow you manage to create problems uh, for yourself and errors start coming up, we worked out today that by accidentally embedding the wrong script, um, these things here, the default settings here, can be deleted. It took us a while to work it out, but once they're deleted, you get all sorts of problems. You start getting errors every time you move anything, and these errors start coming up. So um, if that happens to you as soon as you install it, uh, the reason is most probably that these got blanked somehow. The, the top tick box probably got unticked, so make sure that's ticked. Um, and then nope, uh, put these back to what they were, and you should have no problems. Now, I just wanted to explain a little thing about the control bone here and the fact that the radius of the bone, the size of the bone, creates a radius around it on the control bone and that is the affected area. So if I was to move this control bone, the mouth, the, the rest of the bones just act from their origin or their rotation and the control bones act on their radius. So if I wanted to control the mouth, it's only when that blue line goes over the mouth bone that it gets affected. Um, since yesterday all I've done is added another labels um, vector layer here and um, created the circle, created the labels just so you can more clearly see what's going on. Um, so the same thing with the jaw, which isn't that obvious to see, but let's see the blink. So if the two centers are touching, that's when it's at 100%. And then at anywhere inside this circle, the distance between the two centers is the amount that it will get affected by. So what you can do is if you have different things and you, you want to put them close to each other, so I put these here together, then as I move these down, it will do all, of, all three of those functions, which is the pupil moving, the jaw moving, and the eye closing. Same thing here, if I do the mouth. So what was thinking, um, a, a good way of doing this might be to create a bunch of actions for you, um, you know, in a row. And you create your control bone, which represents the head. And as you have different poses, it might be head poses, might be, could be anything. But rather than moving the control bone that will only affect one at a time, you can move these actions at varying degrees closer or further away inside the area of influence. So um, you can really mix up actions quite organically this way, uh, just by moving the individual bones rather than the control bones. Um, so the other thing is to do with the radius is that if you wanted an action to happen quite quickly, like say a blink, I don't necessarily need all this control over the blink. Um, so if you affect the size of this bone, obviously the radius will decrease. Um, what I'll do for now is I'll select this bone and just remove the blink action from it because I'll, I'll control that blink action separately um, with its own control bone. So I'll move this blink, let's move this blink over here. Oh, that's not, yeah, there we go. Um, I need to create a control bone for the blink. So I create a new bone. And in this case, I want it a really small bone because I want the area of effect to be really small. Between 0 and 100% might be a millimeter of space here rather than this huge circle. So um, I've made a small bone. I've called it blink. And I have to put the semicolon to make it a control bone for the blink rather than just another blink bone. Uh, which will probably cause problems. So now I've created this control bone, just to make it, again, a little bit more obvious. Let me draw in the radius of effect for this bone. I'll create, change the width of it. I'm just going to associate this uh, 
circle with this bone so it doesn't get warped by anything else. Um, so I've selected the bone, selected the points and pressed spacebar. Now if I go over here I can see that it's got a relationship with another bone. So what I need to do again is go to the bones and then break that relationship because the blink was making it fly off the screen. Um, here we are with the blink and now this small area of influence is where the blink happens. It can still happen slowly if I zoom right in I can still move it in tiny increments but what it means is that if I want blinks which will be a faster action I can just kind of move it through like this and because it's so small it's quite hard to get it a hundred percent so what you might want to do is increase the influence of the of the actual blink effect by rotating the bone and you can do this with any of the any of these as well as their radius to the central bone you can also have the control of hold on let me just open the blink here um, you can also have the extra control of rotating these as well as moving them close so I might move this close it might move it to the right but then I want it to actually be over there but you get the idea so it's not only about the control bone and its distance you've also got the rotation which I showed you right at the beginning of the other video same thing with the blink here now I've tweaked it so the eye does actually close even if it's not quite in the center I've just basically made the 100% position bigger um, than a natural blink and it means that if I get to like 75 or 80 percent the blink will happen so um, this just covers a few of the extra functions um, I hope you find that useful and um, if you have any questions come to the forum cheers